how large would you say the stock ecosystem is? Because uh, how, I'm asking because how much influence do you, does the um, Stax uh, Foundation have over the you know larger um, um, stock ecosystem? You know to influence things because uh, you know I think one of the biggest lure things that lure people into the Ethereum Solana ecosystem is airdrops. And mm -hmm. they do sound, you know, funny. It's like free money, but I think some of these things to help to incentivize people to actually grants are good. You know, airdrop is basically free money that goes, you know, to everybody. So, uh, how well, I'm asking, how diverse is the ecosystem in the stars community? You know, people to, uh, you know, the free flow, free flow of ideas, or is everybody just trying to, you know, try to conform themselves to what? Um, stacks, stacks, you know, vision, basically. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's a great question. I was just like pulling up some stats. Um, yeah, I think that in some ways, I think we benefit from right now, we see a lot of organic growth and there's not a real push to say like, we're just gonna like airdrop and or like trying to give things away to get like a number of traders or people who are here just for the financial incentives or, you know, trading free money sort of thing. Um, we did do an airdrop back in 20, uh, I think it was 2020, early 2020 with blockchain.com. Um, so that brought in a number of, of people who were interested, but we decided sort of against doing, you know, at the foundation, we wouldn't do an airdrop because like that doesn't really go into our mission. In terms of size, uh, like we're just over 400,000 addresses for stacks. We just crossed the million dollar stacks transactions mark. Um, so in one year, 12 months, we're just over a million. We've had 200,000 NFTs minted on Stacks. Um, you know, I think like last week alone, it was like 700,000 in trading volume, um, which, uh, you know, it's like smaller than um, what you see like on Ethereum, but like sort of growing this idea of like Bitcoin NFTs. Uh, we also have, you know, just, I think we have like about 50 companies that are built on top of Stacks. Our goal is like, you know, how many, like, how much value can be created by other organizations on top of Stacks? So it's less about our token, it's more about these other projects. And that's where, you know, I talk about Architico, CityCoins, um, Alex, Sw StackSwap. There's like a lot of people who are taking this idea and using the technology to do what they envision for the future. And so like, that's really our goal. At the Stacks Foundation, we're one of probably 20 entities that are supporting different aspects of the ecosystem. So there's a company called Hero Systems. They are focused on, um, on the tooling. Like, so just developer tooling built on Clarity on Stacks. There's Trust Machines. It's a $150 million um, building studio that's focused on helping grow like new infrastructure. They actually just announced a protocol called Zest Protocol last week. That's thinking about how you can bring like a lot of financial primitives to Bitcoin. Um, there's the Stacks Accelerator. That's a separate company. They uh, invest in early stage companies and help them build, get from like idea to launch. So they, I think, had 20 companies go through the last class. They have another 20 going through the new one. Uh, we have the Mintry, which is, uh, this is in-house right now at the foundation, but it's an experiment in helping accelerate NFT projects um, with artists and creators and um, musicians to be able to launch something in the world on blockchains. So like that's taking off now. There's Damon, they focus just on miners and mining support and bridges. So there's like all of these different players. So our goal is like, if the foundation went away tomorrow, there would be a ton of activity happening that doesn't rely on us for stuff to get built. And, you know, our goal is to be like way less important as the ecosystem goes on because there's so much that's like happening and there's like a lot of commercial value. We eventually will probably not need to support anything commercial because we can just focus on you know giving grants for things that aren't very commercialized like governance and blockchain development and educating people so that's that's like our long-term goal um and how you can think about the foundation with all those pieces kind of a rambling it, answer but i'm like oh yeah there's it's like a big map of people <laughs> so does that mean we're going to see the metaf the, the metaverse on stacks pretty soon yeah, I think so. I mean, there's actually a really cool game called um, uh, Moonray, and they have this, like, you know, I think of the, you know, sometimes metaverse, you imagine like the VR headset and you're in like this cool 3D world. I feel like they kind of nailed the like vision of what the future 
in a headset would look like. It's not headset based, but that's just what I think of. Um, but I think, I don't know, it feels like we're already living in the metaverse. Like how much of our lives is already online? Like you guys are people, but like, it's all digital. Like if this internet went away, a lot of the stuff that we're doing wouldn't work anymore. We'd have to change our jobs. We'd have to go do something else because our lives are already so entwined with our digital selves. So I'm a, I'm like, we're kind of already in the metaverse, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, is are there stable coins on stacks? Uh, yeah, I think there's um, right now there's um, USDA, which is through Arcadico. It's a new stable coin. USDC, I think there's a company working with um, Circle on USDC being on stacks. And then there's things like XBTC, which isn't a stable coin, but it's like wrapping Bitcoin that's enabled by stacks as well. So I know that there's a number of people in our ecosystem that want more stable coins on stacks. So uh, we're like, great. Yeah, we'd love to see that too. Uh, but we, you know, are just waiting for those people to kind of build those things. <laughs> you just mentioned XBTC. Are, are stack holders paid in BTC or XBTC? Um, when they're stacking, they get Bitcoin. You got Bitcoin in your wallet. So yeah, if you go to stacking.club, you can see kind of like the rewards and things paid out. Uh, this is beneficial for the Stacks Foundation because we stack portions of our treasury and that Bitcoin we've, um, we use to fund operations. So we don't have to liquidate our treasury to fund normal operations. We also have, like I said, made donations to causes that are in line um, with our future vision, which includes like brink.dev where they're supporting core developers in Bitcoin. So we can just stack for, um, for causes. And actually we're helping build a product through our grants program called stacking for causes. So if you wanted to allocate a portion of your stacking rewards to something you, you know, a philanthropic effort or something like that, you would be able to do that. So you're not actually giving up any of your stacks. You're just giving off some of that extra yield that you're getting. Uh, in an answer to your question earlier about like the metaverse and things like that, I, uh, yeah. I, I kind of agree with you that um, we're kind of already getting towards that, if not somewhat having some form of metaverse. I mean, I've got like my Oculus Quest and I have to have a Facebook account connected to that to when I want to do anything on that. And then uh, there's all this, like, you know, my, my banking is online, my crypto funds and spending is online. It's probably linked to my Amazon, which is linked to this, which is linked to that. Uh, my wish.com account is, I think, is linked to one of my social media accounts when I buy crap that doesn't work online. So I suppose you're somewhat right. But I, I guess, like, when people think of metaverse, they, they think of this uh ready, ready player, player one, one. <laughs> yeah ready player one. Yeah. like this ultra cringy oh, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm in the metaverse oh my word hey I guys think, yeah. i think we need augmented yeah. reality for it to be considered the metaverse <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love my vr headset but like i don't want it to extend beyond some gaming and a bit of like messing around in like a virtual world i wouldn't want it to become like the actual world and i think a lot of people um are fearful of that and i guess i have that boomer mindset where i'm a little bit scared of like being stuck in this like vr world because the real world's got to shit and then like you know uh, having like a super also i hate the idea that like google and or facebook and a few other small companies will basically own everything with and run everything and it will all be run on aws or whatever and i hate the idea of that so i'm keen i'm keen to see these like web3 kind of metaverse kind of things go and give it a shot albeit Sometimes I'm a bit like old fashioned and thinking, well, hey, like a lot of the web three stuff doesn't really seem to solve much of a problem to me yet. But then I guess we'll see where it goes, right? That's the, the way. Uh, yeah. The way I think. I, you know, I kind of think like I agree with Brittany because, you know, people tend to share a different version of themselves online. You know, anybody can be whoever they want to be. You could be rich, you know, you could be, you know, you could pretend to be rich, you could pretend to be, you know, anything you know you want to be online you know people you know do leave double do lead you know double lives and they decide which version of themselves you know they want to share they only show them like i also i remember someone saying that you know social media is basically your highlight reel and mm -hmm. you know people might not get to know the true you you know when they see you on social media be like oh this guy lives such an agent life meanwhile you know the person is probably depressed and you know but yeah, I still want to kick ass in the, you know, do ready player one shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. I have, I have like the very old HTC Vive headset where you like need a whole room and you're like wired to the back. Like I'm like all for living in like a, a digital world, like creating 3D paintings and like, yeah, it's like, it's 
dope. So I'm like very here for that. But yeah, I mean, I, I personally do think that like, what I don't like about the current internet in some ways is that everything almost forces you to be a single identity. And I think that people are way more expressive and like having a pseudo identity is like a superpower. The fact that like you could show up in a community and like just be an artist and like, it doesn't matter about any of the other things that you do or care about. Like you don't have to be a slash. I'm like an artist slash this, slash this, slash this. Um, I think like back in the day we invested in a, in Tumblr. I don't know if anyone used Tumblr um, in the day, but I did, what yeah. I loved about it is like, you got to have like a single view of, of your different um, thread, like almost like your newsfeed, but you could have multiple different blogs that you would have. Like I had one that was just like for art that I like found around the web. I thought it was cool. I wanted to collect it somewhere and it existed. And then I also had my blogging where I was like writing stuff um, that was more related to my job. And then like, I had another one that was just for friends. Like, I don't need to be the same person like in all of those different contexts. Like my friends don't care that I'm writing about crypto. You know, my, uh, my crypto people don't care about the art that I think is like interesting. So I think it's okay to bring those together, but I would love to live in a world where you can have these different trusted identities that are all you, but you don't have to show up as like, I'm Brittany in this space. Like I could be, you know, um, something synonymous. So I love that. I know that creates problems because people are like, well, what about security and spammers and like all this bad stuff that can come from, um, you know, pseudo accounts. But I do think that it actually gives people way more freedom to exist and uh, be like their diverse selves that they can be like, you know, out in the world. It's like you go to the grocery store, no one cares who you are. <laughs> but if you show up in a Twitter space and you like are a bored ape, people like know something about you. I don't know. <laughs> go for yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this might be a little bit, you know, off topic. Uh, but there has been some arguments that, um, women are not unrepresented in crypto or are not well represented in crypto. And there's all this back and forth. I saw some um, a lady on Twitter, you know, arguing that, you know, the space is so toxic and, you know, toxic masculinity and all of that. And um, some people are like, no, that you have to come in, you know, you have to come in early, you know, there's no barrier to entry. So why do you think women are, you know, I know it's no well represented in crypto. Yeah, I mean, I like, I've had this conversation, I feel like my entire career, because I was like an entrepreneur who raised venture capital as a woman. Like I was a woman in VC. There's like less than 10% of, uh, of, um, of the VC industry is women. I was a woman in Web3 like six years ago, <laughs> seven years ago. I ran my own fund. Like the number of women who actually do that is like so small. So it's like constantly this, like, there's not enough women here. <laughs> like we're here. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I do think that like sometimes uh, there are a lot of um, places where it's just traditionally there, there have been less women. So it feels like more alienating. Like if you're getting in the VC industry, it's still really bad of how many women. It doesn't mean there aren't any women. It just, yeah, the majority are not um, as like a baseline, but that's changing. It's gotten so much better in the decades since I first raised VC. I think it's getting better. I think Web3 is a wide open space. And maybe a lot of people who already were very involved in tech, the majority of which are men, not 80%, but maybe 50%, then you're going to see that in Web3. But there are toxic people everywhere you go. So I just advise people, like, don't pay attention to the people you don't want to work with. Like, don't work with assholes. Just ignore them. Find the people who actually support you, who you are, and they don't care if you're a woman or not. Or they are extra supportive because they know that you can be treated differently if you're a woman in the space. So I like that people keep having that conversation. Why aren't there more women? But it's also, why aren't there more people from this country? Why aren't there more representation from these industries? Um, so I think it's just one of those that we have to keep doing. But if someone comes to you and they're being bullied, just say like, hey, I'm here to help you and make sure that you aren't getting treated differently. So be an ally um, to people who maybe are feeling that way. Cause there are, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have dealt with it too. There's like a lot of trolls. And if you're not used to, used to dealing with trolls, like it's a new experience. <laughs> so, uh, like learn how to deal with them. We have like a little tro uh, troll slaying advice we give to new employees in crypto who are just like very eager. And then all of a sudden they get like these really crappy, like trolled Twitter tweets or something. And they're like, ah. <laughs> Twitter can be brutal. <laughs> ignore, ignore the trolls. Yeah, don't feed the trolls. That's the typical advice. 
Um, yeah, I would love to have more women. Like, look at this panel. Like, at least we're getting some, we're getting some like diverse people, diverse backgrounds, it looks like diverse locations. You guys, like someone looks, you look like you're in like a cabin. You look like you're in Europe. <laughs> you're in the metaverse with the blurry background. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to be represented in the real world. Uh, you're right though. It's, we are a diverse group. So I'm from England uh, originally, as you could probably tell from the accent. Um, but then I'm not in Europe though, so you guessed that wrong. So, uh, uh, haha. I was like looking at the AC on your wall and like maybe some IKEA. You were celebrating three years to the day for what? Be being full time in crypto? Yeah. So with Stacks. So yeah, I joined um, Hero Systems, which at the time was called Blockstack, which was some rebrand. Um, but yeah, I started in February of 2019 with um, Blockstack, like full time. Awesome. Well, it's a milestone for us as well because you're our 40th. Uh, podcast guest. This is our 40th episode. So Woo! we're both celebrating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, we've really done 40 of these. That's crazy. Yeah. I couldn't That's believe amazing. it either. That's like 40 hours. That's amazing. How long have you guys been doing it? Wait, when did you start? Uh, well, when did uh, you start? Like a year, maybe? maybe More or less? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. That's Not crazy. very long. Yeah. Someone oh. tweeted that like quote the other day. It was like something like Will Smith. He's like, you don't set out to build a brick wall. You just lay a brick one at a time. <laughs> That's what you guys did 40 episodes yeah. amazing <laughs> our first episode was nothing like this either it was like we had like a whole we were like we were talking about the week and the news and then we had like a guest in sometimes and whatever and then we realized actually we just want to talk to people who are interesting about interesting things so let's just do that instead and then it, yeah here we are now yeah well i know we're on the hour otherwise i'd be like yeah i just want to talk to you guys about the things that interest you because i think <laughs> you've seen a lot more you know you're like up looking around at the world and seeing what's happening so it's very cool can you please tell us about hyperchains i'm seeing something on twitter and yeah yeah but that's a big secret yeah well hyperchains yes so um this is something that isn't like built out of the stacks foundation like we're decentralized so this is coming out of a different uh, company i think oh. out of hero um system so they've been working really hard on it so i'm anxious to read their announcement on twitter i saw that they were announcing but i think the basics are hyperchains provide a way to run more transactions simultaneously. Usually a trade-off of more centralization. So like you're able to get faster um, transaction times, but maybe it's more, um, it's going through uh, fewer, um, blanking on the word, like fewer confirmations in order to get there. So you kind of risk that maybe you don't want like a super high value transaction through there, but maybe something like swapping an NFT makes sense on a hyperchain. So it basically just extends the um, the speed, but it does have that sort of centralization versus decentralization trade-off. Not that it's centralized, but it's just more centralized than than the uh, than the regular chain. Like if you approve things to regular chain. But what's cool is I think there's like multiple hyper chains that can kind of like run simultaneously. The way I think about it is like they're actually like sub layers. I think actually they started calling it subnets, and now they call it hyper chains. But basically, it's like a chain that runs in parallel that ultimately gets finalized back on the Bitcoin um, block or back on the Stacks chain, which will then go back on the Bitcoin block eventually. But yeah, check out the Twitter. I think like at Manib, he's uh, the original founder of Stacks. He now is at Trust Machines. He does a lot of really cool work on um, hyperchain. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for the explanation. And thank you for, for joining us today. It's been awesome to have you um is there anything you want to say like anything you want to plug or say before you before you head out yeah so um if you're interested in learning more about stacks stacks.org that's the foundation's website we have a lot of information there um twitter is a great place to follow we have like over 100,000 twitter followers at stacks s-t-a-c-k-s and then um yeah if you're thinking about building and you're not you know you're like oh maybe i want to learn to code clarity or Maybe have this idea. I think maybe it would make a good grant. Um, come on over. Like we're a very friendly community. Everyone's very kind right now. I feel like uh, we have a really great community. So um, please just like let us know what you're thinking, and if we can be helpful, like we'd love to work with you. Sounds awesome. Very uh, very awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. Anyone out there listening, you heard it. Uh, you heard it here first, or second, or third. But uh, everyone listening as well, thank you for listening, and we hope you have an awesome day, week, month, year, lifetime, whatever um and yeah keep being happy keep loving life and keep buying bitcoin thanks very much see you later